Welcome to the Betting Pros PGA Podcast. I'm Pat Fitzmorris here with my good friend, Bo McBrayer, and we are going to give you a full betting preview today of the Rocket Mortgage Classic. We will also quickly recap Scotty Scheffler's win at the Travelers Championship, and at the end of the show, we'll give you our one-and-done picks for the week. The Betting Pros PGA Podcast is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. Underdog is the place to go for best ball fantasy football contests. But you might not have known that Underdog has golf contests, too. Visit underdog.com or find Underdog in the App Store. And don't forget to register with the promo code DPGOLF to get your special pick and to get a first-time deposit offer up to $250 in bonus cash. More on Underdog and its golf contest a little bit later. Scotty Scheffler wins again. The number one player in the world banked his sixth win of the season. He's won six of 15 events he's entered in 2024. That's an astounding winning percentage of 40%. Um, This was Scotty's first playoff victory of 2024. He had to outlast Tom Kim after a wild 72nd hole. Scotty took a one-shot lead to the 18th, hit his approach shot to about 26 feet, Tom Kim hit his approach shot to just over 10 feet. Then a surreal scene with climate protesters storming the 18th green. Uh, They were arrested and removed. And after Scotty missed his 26-footer, Kim calmly rolled in his 10-foot birdie putt to force the playoff. They started the playoff on the 18th. And after both finding the fairway, Scotty hit his approach shot to 11 feet. Kim put his 110-yard wedge into the bunker where he wound up with a really bad lie. Uh, couldn't fried get egg. It, <laughs> fried egg, big time. Couldn't get it close. Got it to about 36 feet. Missed that par putt, and Scotty had an easy two putt for the victory. We expected a birdie fest at the Traveler's Bow, and we got it. Scotty was a metronome of excellence at TPC River Highlands with rounds of 65, 64, 64, and 65. Um, Cameron, exactly. Cameron Young shot a 59 on Saturday. His round included seven birdies and not one, but two Eagles on par fours. Uh, he hold a 142 yard approach on number three and his tee shot on the very drivable 15th hole stopped four feet from the cup leading to a second Eagle. Uh, Sepp Straka had a 61 on Sunday. Several players had rounds of 62 in the tournament, including Tom Kim on Thursday a four-round score of 16 under par left you out of the top 10 at the Travelers Championship this year. So it was indeed a birdie fest. But what were your takeaways from the Travelers? It was the consistency in which Scotty Scheffler put himself in scoring opportunities and converted them. His putter came back to life. Obviously, the the greens at River Highlands were nowhere near as complicated or tricky as uh, as at Pinehurst. So uh, Scotty had himself a week. <laughs> I mean, you just tip your cap to him, and it's amazing that we've hit any outrights this season with him out on the field. Uh, it's just, it's just, it's hard out here for golf betters because it doesn't really pay to bet him to win unless you're just throwing around heavyweights of money, and you just have to, you have to acknowledge that he's going to win most of the time with the way he's playing right now, and that's. That's just the way the way it goes, and for me, that's why I do placement betting, <laughs> or I do non Scotty bets. You might not get as good of the odds as, well, obviously, in in uh, including Scotty in your bets, but uh, having top ten bets on Akshay Batia and Patrick Cantlay really paid off. Uh, it helped me not get completely skunked by another Scotty win, and uh, some of my friends out there had some Tom Kim with no Scotty involved, so. There are lines on the books where you can say, okay, other than Scotty, who's going to win? Or who's going to have the non, the best non-Scotty finish? And that's that's kind of what we're dealing with. Is It's almost like he needs to give strokes to other professional golfers. <laughs> it's like, like it's a stroke play handicap event. Uh, where like it's 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 a two man scramble out there where he's it's almost like he's playing like two golfers who get to play scramble and he's just that good and tip your cap to him again uh, it hurts as a golf better but it also means that there's opportunities in weeks like this for us, us to get good values on some long shots that have every bit as good of a chance to win as some of these favorites that are 
hyper inflated on the lines. Yeah, no Scotty for a couple of weeks. He won't be playing again until either the Scottish Open or possibly the British Open next month, depending on whether he decides to go to North Berwick. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, and any fears about the wheels coming off for Scotty after the uncharacteristically scruffy performance at Pinehurst, uh, he got those wheels back on as if he was having a uh, an ace Formula One pit crew working on his uh, vehicle. So now we will move on to the Rocket Mortgage Classic in just a moment. But first, our friends at Underdog Fantasy are letting you make picks on your favorite golfers all season long. Just pick higher or lower on selected stats for two to five golfers, and you can win up to 20 times your money in a single day. You can also make rivals picks, choosing, for example, which of two golfers will shoot a better score in a round. Golf picks can be combined with player stats from other sports, too. Go sign up at Underdog Fantasy with the promo code BPGOLF to claim your special pick and to get a first-time deposit offer of up to $250 in bonus cash. We are, uh, yeah, so no Scotty in Detroit, Michigan this week. So someone else is going to be in the winner's circle. And this is not an elevated event. It is a full field event with the standard 36 hole cut. And in fact, this field does not include a single player in the uh, top 20 of the world rankings. So the Rocket Mortgage, Mortgage Classic will once again be hosted by the Detroit Golf Club. It is a 7,370 yard par 72. It is another Donald Ross design. It's a bomb and gouge course. Fairways are relatively wide and flat and the rough is not especially penal and as with last week's host course tpc river highlands the detroit golf club features greens that are a blend of bent grass and poa those greens are small and undulating so it's probably going to take a pretty good week of putting to win the rocket mortgage it also seems as if the big hitters will have an advantage uh and since 30 percent of approach shots are from 50 yards to 125 yards wedge play is going to be very important this week Ricky Fowler is the defending Rocket Mortgage Classic champion. Fowler won a playoff against Colin Morikawa and Adam Hadwin last year. They all finished at 24 under par. Other past winners of this relatively young PGA Tour event, uh, Tony Finau won by five shots in 2022, finishing 26 under par. Cam Davis won in 2021 at 18 under, beating Joaquin Neiman and Troy Merritt in a playoff. Bryson DeChambeau finished minus 23 to win in 2020 and Nate Lashley won the inaugural Rocket Mortgage Classic in 2019 finishing 25 under the weather forecast calls for temperatures ranging from the mid 70s to mid 80s all week significant chance of rain Saturday and we could see some breezy conditions on the weekend with winds in the 10 to 20 mile an hour range Saturday and Sunday uh Bo your thoughts on the Detroit Golf Club and the kind of players you think will do well on this course I mean, it is a bomb and gouge course, but a lot of these guys can bomb and gouge this course even if they're not a bomber. And that's that's kind of the thing with Detroit Golf Club is um, it's devoid of a lot of hazards. There's not a lot of water hazards. There's not a lot of bunkers. The rough is light. It's v wide open, straightforward. If you play good golf and you get, get going on the greens and make enough birdies to keep yourself at pace, kind of like last week, just with a different field, uh, you you really have to uh, keep your foot on the gas here, and it's really a ball striker's paradise. I think that because the distance advantage kind of gives gives some of those guys a shorter club in. Obviously, that has to account in in your in your scoring models. I'm also looking at approach approaches everything here. Um, so if you're if you have a bomber, I would look at your 150 and under. And if it's a not a longer hitter, I'm going 150 to 175 or even 125 to 150. Because uh, a lot of these guys are going to be hitting wedges into these greens, regardless of how long they are, and so you just want you want to focus on approach game, and then a little short game, and a lot of putting. Uh, it's it's going to come down to who can hit it closer and convert those chances. We'll talk odds in just a moment, but first, if you want a chance to win a free one year premium betting pro subscription, you need to su subscribe to the Betting Pros YouTube channel right now. Comment below on this video, and that's it. We will be announcing a winner right here on the channel, so make sure to turn on those notifications so you can be alerted when new episodes are up and to claim your prize. And speaking of Betting Pros Premium, with a Premium Betting Pros sub, you will have full access to our new Betting Pros Betting Systems feature, which is designed to help you find winning trends and make smarter bets. Create and customize your own systems by sports, 
bet type, time frame, or other selected parameters in order to find the most prop profitable betting opportunities. Not only can you make your own systems, you can follow other users' systems to track profitability and to tail upcoming bets in MLB, the NBA, the NFL, and college football. Download and use the Betting Pros app today to find profitable betting systems now. All right, let's get to the odds for the Rocket Mortgage Classic. These are all courtesy of DraftKings as of Monday afternoon. Tom Kim, fresh off his second place finish in Connecticut, is the favorite at plus 1,200. Cameron Young is plus 1,400. He of the 59 last Saturday. <laughs> uh, Min Woo Lee is plus 2,000. Akshay Batia plus 2,200. We have a big group at plus 3,000 that includes Will Zalatoris, Steven Yeager, Maverick McNeely, Keith Mitchell, Alex Noren, and Aaron Rye. At plus 3,500, Taylor Pendrith, Robert McIntyre and Davis Thompson. And at 4,000 plus 4,000 is defending champ Ricky Fowler. Who do you like from this group, Bo? Um, I like a lot of them, but I don't like their odds. The odds at the top here, it's been widely uh, debated as, as soon as those released on late Sunday. Um, there's been pretty much everybody in the community is just disgusted with the lines at the top here. Uh, that just that just means that you got to be careful about your exposure and betting uh, on the top of this board. I do like Tom Kim a lot. He's playing extremely well. Uh, his short game and driving distance aren't up to par here, but he's a birdie making machine. Uh, we saw that last week where he he stood toe to toe with Scotty all the way down through seventy two holes. There was no difference between the two best friends uh, from Dallas. <laughs> I mean, they have the same birthday and everything. And it, it, it looked like they were just completely two peas in a pod on the scorecard. Uh, so Tom Kim at 12 to one is a little short for my liking. I still don't want to go without betting on him. Uh, and then as much as I don't want to play Akshay Batia here, because he's kind of fallen down on my model from mainly the short game metrics, uh, putting specifically, uh, his short game is okay. His approach game on wedges is awesome. I'm just a little bit cautious because uh, he had a really big letdown uh, at the end of Sunday's round. He was right there in the thick of it, but only two under par on Sunday. Uh, he's going to need some time to regroup as a 22-year-old. Uh, Tom Kim's kind of in the same boat, but more a little bit less so because he, he actually got into the playoff. Uh, but I think that if you go to Cam Young, be careful because Cam Young hadn't done anything like that in a long time. And I worry about his consistency, even as well as on paper, he fits this golf course. I worry about his ability to consistently put two weeks like that together. I'm going to start my, most of my betting cards aggressively at Steven Yeager, the Valero Texas Open winner, um, or not Valero, the, the Houston Open Houston. winner. Yeah, so I think, I, I think Yeager, number two in my model, uh, across the board, just a great player, just annihilates par fives. Number eight on approach, number four around the greens here, ball striking top 10. He hits all the boxes here, and he's he's getting a 28 to one line right now as as of Monday afternoon. That's fantastic for a guy who's kind of flying under the radar since he won at Houston. He hasn't done a whole lot, but this is another return to golf courses and field strengths that he can kind of navigate a little bit better. He's not going to stack up well in a, in a stacked uh, signature event, but in a place like this where the golf course really rewards his style of play, I think you can do a lot worse than Steven Yeager. Yeah, Yeager finished ninth here last year, fourth in 2022. He is a bomb and gouge guy, and he seems mm -hmm. to fit this course really well. Uh, he's top 20 in strokes gain on approaches from 125 yards and in. Just seems like this is the perfect course for him. Um, yeah, Tom Kim top five in two of his last four events. He did miss the cut in Detroit last year, but he finished seventh here in 2022. Um, you mentioned Cameron Young. His only previous Rocket Mortgage appearance was in 2022, and he finished second. So he's shown some aptitude for this course. But as you said, Bo, he had been in pretty poor form for like two and a half months. Uh, then he shoots a 59 last weekend and, and right. you know shows you that ceiling we know he has. Um, let's see, Akshay Batia made his debut at the uh, Rocket Mortgage last year, missed the cut. But he has finished top 25 in three straights, including his fifth mm -hmm. last week at the Travelers. Um, let's see. Let me ask you about a couple of guys, Bo. Alex okay. Noren, 
I know you're not big on his ability to close. <laughs> um, he has missed the cut in two of his last three events, including the U.S. Open. But Noren has finished top 25 in nine of his last 11 events, dating back to early March. And he's finished top 10 in his last two Rocket Rocket Mortgage appearances. The other guy I want to ask you about is Taylor Pendrith. Um, he's finished top 25 in six of his last eight tournaments. Finished second in Detroit in 2022 in a tie for second, 14th last year. He ranks top 12 in driving distance and strokes gained putting. So it does seem like a course that's kind of right up his alley. Yeah, I think I prefer Pendrith here because he's a better ball striker. He's a better birdie maker. He's top five in this field and birdies are better gained. He's number six in greens and regulation gained, which is going to be important here. The greens are big, but. Uh, the idea is that you want a guy who's good on approach. Taylor Pendrith, ninth in this field in strokes gain on approach. The, what I what I worry about is with, with Norin is opportunities gained. On courses that require wedge play, he's really weak. He's almost at the very bottom of this pack in the approach buckets that I'm looking at at 150 and under. Uh, that's a huge red flag at a golf course like this. And the way he's been playing lately is not encouraging at all. So be cautioned because you're going to see Alex Norman pop to the, lop, uh, the top of a lot of stat models. And if you filter for the right things, he's going to fall right to the bottom again. Uh, he's not a guy I bet on unless it's for a top 20 or cut made bet. Uh, that's uh, that's really what what I'm looking at is Norin's just not a safe bet because he's going to make the cut, but that's about all you can count on him for. I was initially intrigued by Will Zalatoris at 30 to one mm -hmm. with kind of a weak field, but he has finished out of the top 40 in seven straight events. He's just in really poor form. Uh, yeah. And it's, it's a lot with putting, like he's not comfortable there yet. I, I still think he's a world-class iron player, but I kind of prefer him on longer courses where bomb and gouge maybe isn't the thing. He's not the long hitter he used to be after his back surgery. He's still an amazing ball striker, but, he doesn't convert his birdie chances like he did before the injury. And I, until he does that, I'm going to kind of stay at arm's length. I, I want to see Willie Z do well because I'm a huge fan of his game. I just don't, I don't see him at the, near the top of my model. And in a field this week, it, it's kind of a, a little bit taking me. I'm taken aback by that is that I was expecting to see him pop to the top and he's just not there. Yeah. Putting the putting greens are the most challenging aspect of this course. So mm -hmm. maybe not a good time to uh, take Zalatoris. Uh, and one more guy I'll mention from that top group, Aaron Rye finished ninth in Detroit last year, and he's finished top 20 in his last two events. So he's kind of intriguing. Um, let's look at some of the mid-range options. We've got Taylor Moore and Christian Kirk at plus 5,000. Ryan Fox, Matt Wallace, and Ben Griffin at plus 5,500. Michael Torbornson and Eric Van Royen and Nikolai, Nikolai Hoygaard easy for me to say at plus 6,000 <laughs> Sam Stevens and Adam Svensson are plus 6,500 Patrick Rogers, Lee Hodges and Bo Hostler are plus 7,000 Taylor Montgomery, uh, Nick Dunlap, Kevin, Yu, and Cam Davis are plus 7,500 and Doug Gim and Adam Schenk are plus 8,000. Do you like any of the mid range plays, Bo? Absolutely. Uh, this this range I'm going to be heavily featured. Obviously, if I'm starting at Steven Yeager, I'm I'm going to get a lot of action here in this middle tier. Uh, I absolutely love Ricky Fowler here. Ricky Fowler fifty really? to one is a it's a smacking number, smacking number for the defending champ. Looked great last week most of the time. He had a couple of uh, foul ups where he didn't convert birdie chances, but from what I saw, Ricky Fowler, this dude is getting dialed in. He's number two in the short approach distance buckets. He's number nine in greens and regulation gained. This guy is on the verge of figuring his game out in a big way. We're talking about one of the most talented golfers of our generation. He's going to find that form. And at 50 to one, I'm jumping all over it. Uh, another guy kind of in that deeper range is Chris Kirk. He's number six in my model. Top five on the par four distances. I'm looking at number seven in short approach. Number nine around the greens. Another guy that checks all the boxes and it's getting a really soft line. Uh, Michael Thor Bjornsson is going to get me a going to get a bet from me every time he's under. He's worse than 50 to one every single time. He's a future of golf. Michael Thor Bjornsson is a future major winner, a future multi major winner. And wow. what we saw from him last week was some really sporadic 
excellence. And then, of course, he kind of went through his doldrums on Sunday, trying to trying to catch up to the pack. Kind of made some uh, rookie mistakes in his first PGA Tour professional event. And I, I think that this guy, this guy is so talented that at 65 to one right now, as of Monday afternoon, he's going to get a very heavy investment from me again, because it's a weak field. It's a, it's a golf course that doesn't really penalize anything. I am all over Michael Thor Bjornsson and it, I don't mind being early on him. I might have to tell you on Thor Bjornsson, Thor Bjornsson, um, Kirk is interesting. He is a, uh, for such a young event, I guess you could call him a rocket mortgage classic veteran. He's played <laughs> yeah. four of the past five tournaments. He's never finished worse than 21st, but he's never finished better than 14th. Uh, he, he's just kind of around and well, he's a short hitter. And that's, that's kind of what he has to be good at everything else to make up for that. My only hang up on him is that he currently ranks 152nd in strokes gained putting. But I do think he's a better putter than that number suggests. Yeah, he's 41st in my model with the uh, uh, easy scoring Benton Poa greens in this course length range. So that is encouraging to see. Yeah, two other guys from the mid-range group I'll mention. Taylor Moore finished fourth here mm-hmm. last year, sixth in 2022. So he does have some aptitude for the Detroit Golf Club, but he has missed the cut in three of his last four events. And the one made cut was a 68th last week at the travelers. So not in great form. Um, Ryan Fox kind of has an appealing profile for this event, ranks Mm -hmm. 17th in driving distance, 27th in strokes gained putting. He finished seventh at the Canadian open last month and fourth at the Myrtle beach classic in May. So he's kind of good in these, uh, weaker field tournaments. So Fox, Foxy's kind of interesting here. Um, let's talk long shots, Bo. With kind of a watered down field, are you taking some chances with players at 90 to one or longer? Yes, sir. I am taking a chance on NorCal brother, Cameron Champ, long hitter, one longest Mm. in the world out there. But he crushes the ball off the tee, not just in distance, but strokes gained off the tee with my parameters. He's number one in this field. And birdies are better gained, number three in this field. Number one in driving distance in this field, number three on par fives. That's all these boxes are getting checked. His short game is okay. His putting is okay. I think that if he can figure out his wedge game, he's going to, he's going to go really far in this event because as we see these kinds of events like Mexico and Corrales Punta Cana, uh, Cameron champ shows up for those because he can just let it rip off the tee and then try to make as many birdies from the positioning. He put, he puts himself in such unique spots on these types of golf courses nobody else is in he's not going to fall into a divot in the middle of the fairway with the way he hits the ball so it's uh it, for me it's it's going to be uh, dependent on how his wedge game looks uh, it's been kind of up and down this year but everything else says that Cameron Champ is going to make a lot of birdies and he's going to show up at this type of golf course in this type of event in this field what about some of our friends from uh, events past who are big hitters and might fare well here? Uh, Rio Hisatsuni, 90 to 1. Jake Knapp, 110 to 1. Alejandro Tosti, I believe he's also 90 to 1. Any of those guys? Uh, Knapp and Tosti are worth a fly just because they have the firepower to do it. I'm thinking, let's go, let's go in the time machine and let's start to talk like this. Francesco Molinari, 500 to one, number seven in my model. That really? should be a, that's a big green flag for me. Cause I mean, it's fun to say Francesco Molinari <laughs> and number seven, in my model, he, uh, his only weak spot is putting everything else. He's in the top 60 of this field, including top five and around the green number 10 in short approach number five on the par four distances and number t- number 18 on approach overall. That's, that's great. He's a he's a fairway finder. He's a he's a green hitter. And every once in a while, Molinari will go and get hot. It's usually on tougher places than this. But uh, for 500 to one, I, I have good vibes from the Italian. Fantastic. Perhaps motivated by Italy's stirring comeback at the World Cup to make it to uh, the knockout stage. Um, but yeah, Molinari always has been a world class ball striker. It's just that, you know, isn't always yeah. the best on the putting green. It's got to make something. Yes. All right. Um, So what do you have on your betting card as of now, Bo? 
All right, so I got a lot of Jaeger, Jaeger bombs. I got some Ricky Fowler. I am, I'm going to dabble in some Cameron Champ and then Chris Kirk. I'm, I'm still throwing, I'm going to throw a bunch of grenades out here at 100 to 1. I, I didn't even mention Bud Colley at 200 to 1. Uh, Francesco's obviously going to get a couple bucks. Cameron Champ's going to get a couple bucks. I'm going to probably have to flip a coin between Jake Knapp and Rio Hisatsune and all those Alejandro Toasty. Toasty made me some good money on placement bets earlier this year. Let, let's let it fly this week. I, I, I don't feel like being aggressive, but I feel like if you just throw a cluster of bets out there on guys that have the firepower, you don't have to invest a lot, and you have incredible upside. It's going to be super fun to watch this event. This is actually a pretty fun tournament to watch on TV because even though a lot of these guys are not household names, they might be soon. Oh, and don't forget Michael Thorbjörnson at 65 to 1 currently. If you see that number move uh, south, like it gets uh, more favorable in our direction, just get heavier on the betting because if I have a feeling that a lot of people don't know about him yet and his number might slip like it did last week when we when we published it last week, he was 150. By the time I, I recorded my other show the next day, it was at 250, and I went even heavier on him. <laughs> I'm going to take Akshay Bhatia. Uh, I've, I've got a little more confidence than you do in him. All over Steven Yeager with you. Uh, that will be my biggest bet of the week. Taylor Pendrith, I'm going to play. Um, and then small bets on Rio Hisatsune and Jake Knapp. And I am going to trail you on uh, Michael Thorburn, Thorbjornsen. Uh, how can I, when you promised me multiple future majors, Bo, how can I resist? He's, he's so much fun. Like, like if you have access, like you're on YouTube, search Michael Thorbjornsen Stanford and just watch him. Like this guy is a machine. And I had so much fun watching him on PGA Tour Pass last week just because I was so interested in how he would do at, at the Rocket Moor, at the, at the, at River Highlands, and he was it was impressive. He he didn't get a lot of birdies on some of the days, but when he was hot on Saturday, it was so much fun to watch this kid just navigators around away around a golf course. He's got so much firepower. Let's hope he gets it cooking in Detroit, Bo. Now, before we get to our one and done picks, if you're playing in a one and done golf pool, or if you're playing in any sort of tiers based majors pool this year, our friends at Pool Genius have a new product that gives you an edge. Using objective data like betting odds, course performance, and national pick trends, the tool highlights the top value picks that give you an edge, and it can all be customized specifically for your pool. If you're doing a one-and-done pool or majors pool, let Pool Genius be your secret weapon. And by the way, Pool Genius isn't just for golf pools. You can use it for March Madness pools, NFL Survivor pools, and more. For 10% off on the majors tool and for up to 55% off on yearly packages that include all golf, football and march madness tools visit poolgenius.com slash fantasy pros that's poolgenius.com slash fantasy pros now for the one and done picks kind of a disappointing week for us since we both burned big guns and didn't really get our money's worth i took xander shoffley last week at the travelers and he finished tied for 13th that was good for four hundred thousand dollars in an elevated event with a big purse uh you had levig oberg he tied for 27th Good for $144,000. I made up, yeah, I made up a quarter of a million dollars on you, Bo, but I'm still $3.1 million behind you uh, after your big win. I thought you were Bryce buried. Lee. I thought I was going to bury you and just put the nail in the <laughs> coffin, and Oberg just let me down. Yeah, tough week for him. I mean, I guess he, uh, maybe it just he wasn't. He couldn't make anything. He couldn't make anything all week. <laughs> He's a he's a big event guy, Bo. Maybe that was it. He was well, he, he was up he was one of the hottest putters coming into there, and he he was like dead last in strokes gained putting in the in the field. It was it was very disappointing, unexpected. So you are up first this week, Bo. Who do you like in Detroit? So this took me a while because I've burned Tom Kim, I've burned uh, I've burned pretty much everybody. Jaeger, I've burned everybody at the top here except for Akshay Batia. So I'm going to use Akshay Batia this week. I had a feeling you might, and um, I got to go Steven Yeager here. I mean, it's it's yeah. b- as good as I, I used him. I used him a few weeks, a couple months ago, actually. And uh, and so I wanted to use him. I was like, oh, I, I need to use Yeager this week. And I looked in, at the at the list and I was like, well, <laughs> yeah, I really like Taylor Pendrith this week. So he was uh, like a 
given him strong consideration, but I do think Jaeger is the way I'm going to go here. So uh, that's going to do it for this week's show. Thank you to our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Sign up for Underdog with the promo code BPGOLF. Claim your special pick and to get a first-time deposit offer of up to $250 in bonus cash. And please come join Bo and I again next week when we will be previewing the John Deere Classic. Until then, so long, everyone.